Hi everyone, this is Mr. Grania, your librarian, here to talk to you today about Noodle Tools. Um, this is a refresher video, so if you've seen me discuss Noodle Tools in class, this kind of goes over everything that I've talked about. Um, and what's nice is that because it's a video, you can pause it and rewind it and watch it at your leisure. Or just kind of watch my mouse clicks if you don't really want to listen to my voice the whole time. Alright, so first of all, we are on a Gmail screen, uh, because remember, the best, um, most sure way to get to Noodle Tools is by using, that's right, you said it, the app waffle up here in the corner through Gmail. Now why that's the case, I don't know, but it's always going to be here in Gmail. So let me click the Google Apps. I will scroll down until I see the Noodle Tools icon, and there it is. I'll click on it. Now it should log me in because I'm logged into Google. If it doesn't log you in, remember, use that Google button to log in. Don't try to type in your login information. Also, when you log in, it might ask you for your date of graduation. You don't need to worry about that. Just leave that be. All right, so here we are. Um, we are on my projects page. If you've done projects before, you will see them listed here. Um, let's go ahead and start a new project. I'm going to name this project um, Jason Reynolds because we, I'm doing research on the author, Jason Reynolds. We are going to use the citation style that's called MLA. So I will click that. That's Modern Language Association. And then we're going to use the citation level of starter. Now you could use junior or advanced if you're doing things like conducting interviews or maybe pulling more obscure types of sources. But if you're just going to be using the internet, uh, maybe some databases that I have provided for you, or perhaps even books, um, starter is the way to go. All right, I will go ahead and click Submit. And it has created my project. Now it's going to take us to this dashboard page. Uh, we don't really need this dashboard page right now. Um, this is for if you're um, conducting a more serious research project and you need your question laid out very clearly. You need to have your thesis, your main claim, or your hypothesis laid out there as well. Um, and then you, it even has a link for you to actually start your paper. But most of the time, your teacher will provide you with some kind of Google Doc in which to write your paper. So this is kind of more for a free-flowing or more advanced uh, research uh, project. Now, if you're going to be sharing your project with anybody, then you can actually add collaborators here. So if you're doing research with someone else, you don't both need to start a project. Just one of you does. And you can click Add Students and find each other using your um, username or that beginning part of your email address. So let's go ahead to sources because I have found a few sources that I like. Now I found one source through Britannica, which is this article about Jason Reynolds. And remember, if I'm using Britannica or anything from N.C. Wiseau, most of the time the citation is done for me. And then I have one from the web where the citation is not done for me and I'll need to fill in some information. So let's go ahead and get into it. I'm going to go ahead and add a new source. Remember, uh, I've got Britannica, so that's going to be a database. So I will click Database, and that is original content in the database. Now, let's go to Britannica and find that citation. Remember, it's done for me, and it's going to be presented in this space here. All I need to do is click on the little checkbox that says Cite. And notice, the MLA citation style is selected for me. I don't need to change this at all. I'll leave it at MLA, and I will copy from here to here. Now notice, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here so you can see exactly where I'm copying. I'm copying from the quote all the way to the period, to pass the period, right? Just that. We don't want to highlight extra words, but we don't want to leave anything out either. I'm going to do my shortcut command C, and I'm going to come back to Noodle Tools. Now notice, it's copied. I have it copied somewhere, but I need to paste it. I'm not just going to paste it in the first box I see. Notice here there's this option for quick cite, copy and paste the citation. I'm going to go ahead and select that. I'm going to go ahead and paste that. So I will use Command V, you'll use Control V to paste it in, or just do a right click and select paste. I'm going to scroll down, make sure there's anything else I need to fill out. I don't need to add any of this information here. All I've got to do is click save at the top. And the citation will show up in my citation list. Now, this is just one single citation that I've done. So it's going to be the only thing on the screen. Um, but when the next one comes in, you're going to notice that it's going to alphabetize them. Let's go ahead and cite our next source. So that's this one. Um, an article about Jason Reynolds. 
uh, from a news station in Baltimore. All right, so let me go back to the Noodle Tools. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new source. Now this is a website and it is a web page. Okay, so before I cite this source, let me see what it needs. It needs a URL, a date of publication, most recent date of access, contributors. All right, so we've got a lot of information we've got to add in here. So let's go ahead and start with the URL. Let me go to this article right here. I can copy the URL, paste it in the box. Date of publication. Let's see when this was published. Again, usually it's at the top. It could be down at the bottom. Those we've got January 13th, 2020. So January 13th, 2020. Most recent date of access. I accessed it today, so I can just click the word today when I read it last. Um, ah, here we go. Contributors. First name, middle name, last name. So let's take a look. So in this case, we do have an author, and that's Max McGee. Now, if we had multiple authors, we could add contributors by clicking this blue button, but we don't need to. All right, so the author, let's select his role. He's an author. Let's go ahead and type in Max... Notice I'm following the rules of capitalization, McGee. Okay, and there was no suffix, so we're okay there. Ah, web page or document article title. Again, I can copy and paste that. Save myself a little bit of time. There we go. Now notice, it gives me some suggestions. So there's some things that I need to change. Even though that's how the article is, I need to go in and change it so that it follows the rules of MLA. So let's do that. So the article, the, of, and of all need to be changed as well as looks like some ands, buts, fors, if they're in there. So the, of, for, okay. That looks about right. Now the name of the website. What is this website called? This is CBS Baltimore. Let's go ahead and put that in there. Publisher of the site. Now we find the publisher of the site usually down at the bottom of the page. Let's go ahead and zip down there. Got CBS Broadcasting Inc. Now notice, I don't need to actually type in the word Inc. I could just put CBS Broadcasting. There we go. Annotation, I don't need to annotate this in any way. Make sure that box is checked down there and I can click Save. And there we have it. We've got um, my database cited and we have my website cited. Now if I were to use a book, I would go ahead and cite that as well. Um, with books, let me just go ahead and show you as an option here. Um, if I click new source um, and I'm adding a book, it's a print book, I can actually import the information via ISBN. So I can just copy and paste the ISBN number in there, click search, and there it is, Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds, Chris Priestley, uh, published in London, etc. Because we've got to click this box, make sure it turns this shade of light blue, and then click import selected source. Okay, so uh, this gives us a chance to edit um, some of the information if it needs to be edited. Uh, this pulls from WorldCat, which is a good source for the information about books. Um, in this case, I'm gonna unselect Chris Priestley because this is really Jason Reynolds' book. Chris Priestley helped in some capacity, but it, uh, Jason Reynolds is listed as the only author. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Continue. And now notice it fills in all of those blocks for you. So if you have the ISBN number, uh, it's very easy to cite a book. I go ahead and click Save. And it will add this citation to my list as well. And notice they are all in alphabetical order. Yes, I just happened to add them that way, um, but it's helpful to um, go in and uh, double check. Now notice, I'm, I, I missed a little error here. Notice this is long way down and the D is lowercase. So I can actually go in here, click Options, Edit. And I can edit 
there we go. And I click save and it makes the change for me. All right, it's done. So the last step, of course, let's say these are all the sources that I use for this project, which considering their length, hopefully I had more sources to use later. Um, I can click print export and we're gonna send that to Google Docs and it will open the Google Doc for me to show me what it looks like as a finalized works cited page that you can then turn into your teacher. And there it is, everything is in the right order. Okay, so that about does it. Uh, that's how you use Noodle Tools. As always, feel free to email me and ask me questions about your projects. Um, I'm happy to help you with a difficult citation. I'm happy to just look at a citation you've done. If you wanna send me a screenshot of it when it's finished, or if you wanna share the source with me, um, share the Google Doc with me, or if you just want to email me and say, hey, help, uh, I'm happy to help you out with any aspect of citing your sources, of finding good sources, or um, of just, you know, helping you get some work done. All right, as always, thank you for listening, and happy reading.